Hello and welcome to the fourth interview of the Fuel Injection podcast. Today today we have Charles North the sixth on board. How's everyone doing? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Awesome. All right, so let's just jump into the interview. Um, so where, where are you from? Where am I from? I'm from uh, originally from Morristown, New Jersey, then uh, I moved to Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and I moved back to Morristown, New Jersey, and now I currently live in Merchantville, New Jersey. So, Lots of jumping <laughs> around then, all, all in the same state. <laughs> yeah, and pretty much like same like three towns area because they're pretty close to one another. So, mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. um, so, what what made you a petrol head? Oh, what made me a petrol head? Uh, I gotta say, when I was younger, um, other than Fast and Furious and whatnot, uh, I was let's see, fourteen, and there was a nineteen eighty seven Camaro. It was a black eye rock that was parked next to uh, my dad's neighbor's house. It was just sitting there. Uh, for me, it was almost love at first sight. I didn't know what it was. It just looked really cool. It was a little boxy. And uh, for a little while, I told my dad I, I wanted it. He got it for me for my uh, 16th birthday. And it got fixed. And a, a couple of years later, it got fixed. And then I started working on cars, and then, you know, eventually I found Top Gear episodes through, like, Facebook stuff, and then I started watching Top Gear, and then when all that went, you know, Grand Tour, pretty much, like, how any normal person falls in love with cars. Yeah, I think okay. Top Gear's definitely, um, a lot of special heads will agree, Top Gear definitely was a big part of was big part of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I got, I thought, yeah, I fell in love with cars. Uh, I guess then before then, uh, this is the same IROC. If you guys don't know the story about, they got stolen. Uh, a few mm -hmm. years later. Yeah, uh, my dad That's got it back in two thousand. Yeah, a flatbed came in and took it at the apartment complex I lived at. So just just stole it, just like came in, took it away, like no yeah. no logic, no warning, nothing, huh? Nope, nothing. That's odd. I, I, I had a ninety-five. Yeah, I had a I had a ninety-five Z. I had a ninety-five Z twenty-eight at the time it got stolen, and um, because the I rock was broken down, I blew a head gasket, and mm. I hadn't had the money to fix it, so I was gonna fix it. And then all of a sudden I came home one time from car meet and it was gone. I went to a frantic, uh, called the cops. Funny enough, it was a ring of uh, car thieves that we ended up catching. They called a car. Uh, they found a car that was being stolen from them a couple towns over. Uh, and then, you know, they all got tried, but I didn't see any money for it. They took it right to a, uh, a scrapyard. So I haven't seen it since. And that's why I got the other 87 Camaro. But I just sold that earlier this year. Because so I love that Camaro. I'm sorry we're going on a rant for that, that, about a Camaro. But this is why I love Camaro. <laughs> that's okay. So, that's okay. That's what it's all about. Petrolhead. Yeah. yeah. And, it was a, and this IROC was a five-speed. Never driven manual before, really. Other than my father-in-law teaching me on his 89 F-150. But I learned it really quick within like an hour. And I had it down, drove to work, fine, everything like that. It was good to go. And it was a 305 liter. It was a 305 five liter V8. It wasn't the 350 motor either. So. Mm. Still a good engine, though. Yeah. Still a good engine. Yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, and in, in layman's terms, it was also a really good boat anchor. So it was a V8, <laughs> at least. Like, yeah. yeah. It made about 210 horsepower, but. It was angry when you revved it, so. <laughs> Must have nice. sounded great. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it was stock. Oh, awesome! James may want to prove of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Standard. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, what sparked your interest in doing um, auto reviews? Oh, uh, yeah, I have to give all that credit to the three wise men. Uh, if it wasn't for them, because I was, I, I'm studying to be a history teacher, and as time goes by, uh, 
I'm finding myself more and more into driving cars or and talking about them since I'm an amateur when it comes to racing. Uh, but I still have plenty of experience other than the professional license for racing. Uh, I can honest, I can give as much honesty I, as I can to what I'm reviewing. Um, I honestly first started writing my reviews on the competing uh, website called Car Throttle. Oh, and it was just yeah. one of them user things. I, I wrote like one or two reviews on there. I don't know if they're still up there or not due to user inactivity. But and then when Drive Tribe came out, that's when I just I copied and pasted my reviews from there to the other one. And um, I just kept going. I, you know, I, I persevered and I've now been able to get press cars. And I'm honestly in two weeks from now, I'm quite excited because I'm going to be able to review one of the a, a GT car. Uh, oh. I don't want to spoil it just yet. I don't okay. want to spoil it just yet because I'm excited. But um, this is it, it's a this is fun because I'll be celebrating with my wife and I's year anniversary that weekend, and we'll be taking it up to Maine. That's about oh. an almost nine hour drive. Congratulations! And I can't take it up because of thank you. But uh, but since I but if I can't take it up, I'll be taking the Toyota Supra up. So I'll be getting that too. So nice. after so many months of asking to get that, um, but reviewing cars, it's uh, for someone like me, I have to build a relationship either with manufacturers or with um, or or with just the people themselves. I start out going to dealerships asking them if i can review their cars and they reluctantly said yes or they happily said yes you know um i and i saw a, a post about something you wrote with how you don't like how formulaic automotive reviews are like how they just talk about crap out of the brochure and I, yeah yeah so but but what gets what really grinds my gears though is these in, are these Instagram automotive journalists oh. where they take a picture of a car like I'm not going to name names but there's a guy I check on every time because him and I end up sometimes getting the same car and I look at his and I'm like dude that's so bleh but yet he's followed by some popular people I'm like what the hell uh, yeah whatever. like how, how do you I, like, gain that fame person. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's <laughs> must that's yeah, bad. Uh, I have I have to yeah, but I have to give it to uh, James, Jeremy, and Richard for getting me into writing my reviews, and because of them, I've taken journalistic classes in my college, you know, time. So. Wow. Impressive. So, um. What exactly yeah. gave you and Alex the idea to start doing car news on the podcast? What well, gave Alex and I ideas car news on a podcast? Mm -hmm. uh, I like to say that was a combination of what we wanted to do as well as a, um, a thing that we've done before and it's it's popular, but we do it as something that's we, we do it differently than others because some people will talk about news where it's like, oh, the TRX Raptor TRX uh, F1500 came out and we should think about that for a little bit. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's popular and yeah, we, we, we've discussed it from time to time or whatever, but. Now, we also like to talk about the news that, you know, drive drivers have written, and we give them those credits, you know. Yeah. Um, so I like to say if I see an article that has been made up to the home page, I find it that someone else hasn't grabbed. Uh, you know, clearly we put that up there, and I say, hey, this person wrote this article. Uh, um, you know, this is what they said. This is what they reported. So I give them all that stuff, and, you know, thanks to – the Drive Tribe sharing their content, and I'm able to promote them 
from what we doing that their content helps us we help them so for that it's just a random grab but we still do not just uh plagiarize what we're talking about we give them the um the credit and we thank them for it well yeah, well, yeah we thank them for it so it's a nice um, it's a nice way to, to get people to you know to um give them a chance to have the article a bit more well known and then it gives you stuff to talk about and mm -hmm. you know new ideas to discuss and all that so yeah i think That's it's a, it's a good little yeah um cycle yeah yeah, and even if I'm, I'm sorry for anybody listening that I, if you guys have seen the podcast and I've butchered your name, I highly apologize. I, I, I'm, I sincerely apologize for butchering your name if I have. I try my best with names. I'm usually good with pronouncing names. So. All right. So, um, and uh, do you have any tips for people who go, uh, going back to the you know to the auto um to the auto uh to the auto stuff um and your articles um do you have any tips for people who may want to start like doing press calls and getting press calls and start doing um the the kind of um auto journalism uh yeah uh the one one tip i can give is that there's honestly no guidebook to start your own stuff yeah i started you know uh it is it, it all begins with wanting to do it um yeah and and you know it, you, the the path you take isn't necessary isn't going to be the wrong path if you, as long as you don't give up on it now if you want to give up on that path and try to take a different path and see if that works so be it but no, it's 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 never just one straight. Yeah, you do this to do this to do this to get to this to do this. It's a lot of crossroads, and maybe they end up at the same point. But you know, um, what helped me out was I took in some books to either help my photography. You know, I'm a really good photographer as well because all the pictures I've taken usually are mine as long un unless I put taken from Google. Every picture is mine. Um, also, there is a book. I wasn't prepared for this, so I I'm going to have to take my laptop with me, but I will walk. But there is a book here that I got and it's not necessarily an instruction book. But it is a uh, helpful tip book. Let's see here, and it is called "How to Be a Mo How to Be a Motoring Journalist" by Carlton Boyce. And um, yeah, I I believe my wife got this for me for a Christmas present because I asked for it. It was on Amazon. I mean that that helps with what you want to do. Um, yeah, that's pretty much persevere. If you persevere, but you also have to want to, you also want to have to do it. You can't just sit there and be like, all right, I'll write about a car and see where that gets me. No, you have to write about cars. You have to keep writing about cars. You have to make yourself a profile and, 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 you know, try to find the connections. You know, no one's really going to show you how to get there because you're going to end up being their competition. It's, you know, but I don't mind pointing in some direction, giving some tips because it's a cruel world. It's fun, but it's yeah. cruel. So it is. It's definitely one of those one of those um, fields where it's like you're very much like on your own. You figure it out, like advocate for yourself, talk to people, yeah. get your press cards, you know. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's it. good advice. Yeah, I think you definitely. I think I think it's true with anything. You kind of have to want to do it to be able to get started with it and have some level of success with it. So mm -hmm. yeah, because there's gonna be a lot of people to tell you no, especially if you're just starting out and three years in i'm still in a sense starting out so i'm still being told no ferrari's telling me no lamborghini's telling me no 
A uh, few other manufacturers have told me no, just because either I'm not pulling in what they want or something. So yeah. they're, they all are nitpicky. There's a few manufacturers that don't give a crap, <laughs> but there are some who have standards. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, last question, um, going back to the podcast really quick. Um, so are you and Alex thinking of implementing any new segments? So like any anything new going on with the podcast? Or is it just mostly going to be um, auto news for now? Um, at the moment, it's right now linear, not much changing uh, as format, as the format goes, we're quite happy with it. Um, but I, we do have a few ideas that we want to try to stick on. Sometimes it, sometimes when we think of something, um, we'll talk to one another and see if it sounds good or what, but Recently, we haven't been like, hey, let's try this out. Well, I got some ideas. I plan on spitting to them and saying, hey, let's let's try it out. But with everything we were doing is we want to see how everything uh, pretty much flows. You know, we're getting good with one thing. All right, so we got to trim up something else and then tr trim that up. See it. Try to get it all formal and in uniform. And then if there's something that we feel needs to change, we'll clearly change it if we need to or add something even. And yeah. that's what I think I want to be doing soon. Uh, it's just that's something I would have, him and I would have to discuss about and make sure that we're all on board with it, especially the other two anchors, Jason and Dan. So. Yeah. Well, they have been doing quite well, so if it's not broken, you don't have to. Uh, fix it. That's exactly. True. Yeah. Exactly. That's, That's why if you find your own voice in the uh, automotive world writing reviews, don't try to fix it. Eventually, like your writing will mature. You know, your your grammar will mature. Everything will mature, and that's where you'll understand that. All right, you're growing. You're able to get things going. You're able to write better. Everything flows. Stuff like that. It's the same with podcasts. So, yeah, I'm quite new to podcasts this year. I'm new. So, I mean, so am it's I. Fun. It's <laughs> yeah. So it is exciting. Yeah. Definitely yeah. a good thing to be doing. Oh, at yeah. least at least as a hobby. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the moment until you get paid and you're like, all right, I'm having fun and talking and getting paid at the same time. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah. Because everybody, everybody either here on Drive Tribe or on the podcast, I have talking about cars with and it's usually the only time i really get a chance to talk about cars because no one i really talk to personally likes talking about cars so yeah all right well i think that concludes the the uh, interview so thank you so much charles for coming on and um this interview will be up um hopefully by tonight if not by tomorrow morning and thank you all so much for watching please like yeah. comment and subscribe and we will see you next time all right and thanks for having me no problem. It was a pleasure. Bye.